Hello, today we are talking about multiplying fractions. The first problem we are going to do is one half of two thirds. Another way to say that would be one half times two thirds, or the product of one half and two thirds. So, before we begin trying to do this mathematically, let's see if we can try to explain it visually. Here we have a bar, let's call it a candy bar, and it is broken in two thirds. And as you can see, two thirds of the bar is orange, and one third of the bar is white. So we have two thirds of a bar being orange. Now let's say your mom says, okay, I have two thirds of a candy bar left. You can have half of what is left. Well, what does that really mean? How much of that candy bar are you really getting? So let's see what we could do to figure out what half of this two-thirds left that you're getting is. And what we're, what we're going to do now is divide the whole bar right down the center. So here we have our whole bar with the black line right down the center showing that the black line is dividing it in half. And if you think about the other thirds, you now have six pieces. So if you can have half of what is left, you get these two pieces right here out of the six entire pieces that are there. So you would get two-sixths of the entire bar. That would be two-sixths, which you know simplifies to be one-third. So, one-half of two-thirds is one-third. Let's see if we can do that mathematically, because sometimes you're not really going to want to see a diagram, or make a diagram for that matter. So let's make this math, let's do the same problem mathematically. We have one-half times two-thirds. When you're multiplying fractions, you can just multiply straight across. That is not the same thing as cross-multiplying. You are going to multiply numerators here and multiply denominators here. So, in our numerator, we have 1 times 2, which, and in our denominator, we have 2 times 3. Now, sure, you could multiply those together and get 2 over 6, but I like to do my multiplication and my simplification in one step. Instead of multiplying to get big numbers, I would factor to get prime numbers and then find my equivalent forms of 1. Luckily here we have all prime numbers and I see that 2 over 2 is an equivalent form of 1. It's equal to 1. So what I am left with here is 1 over 3 or 1 third. So here's a problem we probably wouldn't want to show using a diagram because we'd have to take a bar break it into ninths, and then break it into another sixteenths, and that would just drive me crazy. So here instead, we are going to just do this problem mathematically. So we're going to take our four ninths and multiply it by our three sixteenths. Again, multiplying our numerator by our numerator and our denominator by our denominator. So multiplying straight across, we're going to get four times three over nine times sixteen. Now again, I don't want to multiply those numbers together. 4 times 3 might be easy, but 9 times 16 isn't that easy. So I'm going to take my 4 times 3 and my 9 times 16. I'm going to break those into prime factors. 4 is pretty easy. That's 2 times 2, and 3 is already prime. Now looking at my denominator, I know 9 is 3 times 3. 16, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to show a little scratch work. So I'm going to start um, breaking my 16 into any two factors, 2 times 8, or 4 times 4 would work. I'll do 2 times 8. And then 8 factors into 2 times 4, and 4 factors into 2 times 2. So now just looking at our prime numbers, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 twos, and that's going to go back in our denominator. So now let's see where our equivalent forms of 1 are. 3 over 3 here is an equivalent form of 1, and 2 over 2 is. 
I have this 2 over this 2 is another equivalent form of 1, and that's it. So left to my numerator, I have 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. And in my denominator, I have 3 times 1 is 3, times 1 is 3, times 1 is 3, times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12. So my answer is 1 over 12. See, we're going to do one more problem. Here we have 5 times the quantity of 8 over 20. So we have a whole number times a fraction. Whenever you have a whole number, you can always put that over 1 in order to make it a fraction. 5 is the same thing as 5 over 1. And 8 over 20 is obviously 8 over 20. So again, we're going to multiply our numerators, so 5 times 8, and multiply our denominators, 1 times 20. Before we multiply to get big numbers, we're going to go ahead and factor to see if we have any equivalent forms of 1. 5 is just 5, it's already prime. 8, I happen to know, factors into 2 times 2 times 2. Now looking at our denominator, we have 1. I'm going to do some scratch work over here for my 20. That's 2 times 10, and 10 is 2 times 5. So now just looking at our prime numbers, we have 2, 2's, and a 5. Now we're going to find our equivalent forms of 1. 2 over 2 is an equivalent form of 1. 2 over 2 is an equivalent form of 1. And here we have 5 over 5 is an equivalent form of 1. So now multiplying everything we have left, in our numerator, we have 1 times 1 times 1 times 2, which is 2. In our denominator, we have 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. 2 over 1 is the same thing as 2. It equals 2. So 5 times the quantity of 8 twentieths is 2. Here are a few problems for you to do. If you have any questions, you can note them on your Google form, you can email your teacher, or you can ask in class tomorrow. Good luck and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. But before I leave, I wanted to show you one of my friends, Buster. He wanted to do a little something for you. Buster wanted to show you his tricks too. Roll over, Buster. Roll over. Good boy.